What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 58 of Leon Live here in Football Manager 2019. If you missed last episode do go check it out. Massive games, PSG, Juventus, also a youth intake. It was a good one. Today we are back once more. You can see bank balance looking pretty healthy all in all. And uh, well if we just go back one screen here you can see our current board club confidence. So yeah, things are pretty good. They're a bit disappointed with the club finances. I assume that's because we're slightly over budget in terms of our committed spend. Can I can I just rejig it? If I rejig... Okay, we're still over budget. That's all the players being loaned out, I think, controlling and uh, well going towards that dedicated spend. You can see in terms of the rest of the things, obviously, unsurprisingly, competition is the focus of disappointment. Uh, disappointed with the fact that we didn't make it further in the Champions League. Uh, they do, however, understand that we had a difficult draw. We are also technically underperforming in the league. So that's a concern too. We will try and close the gap there. And the French Cup, thing, things are going okay. The expectation is to reach the final. Of course, we are most likely going to have PSG to take on. And then the other two competitions we've got here, not seen as important... But we're doing okay in them. Um, we are in... Well, one of them we lost in the final of, to be fair, at the start of the year. But the other one we're in the final against PSG in. So even if the board don't care, you know, we're going to do our best. Anyway, we start today with an international break. So a nice two-week period for me to just ramble away. Um, I will say, uh, as of late, the, the views on the series have been a little lower than I would like them to be. I always like to be quite, you know, transparent with you guys. Uh, if you are someone who's been falling in and out of the series, feel free to let me know down in the comments why that's been. Has, have you been getting a little bit bored? Have you just not had time to catch all the episodes with them being so long? I would be interested to hear from you. And of course, if you are someone who's watching every day, um, I do hope you are still enjoying the series. It's still going pretty good. Obviously, uh, over the last week or so, I've been a little... I want to say I've been lax on the uploads in terms of it's not been necessarily every day. I feel like, by most YouTuber standards, doing four or five uh, videos a week is still pretty good going on my own behalf. But it's not quite been at the same standard it was before. Uh, there has been a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, uh, I have just been trying to pace myself a little bit more. I could feel a teeny tiny bit of burnout coming in. And in previous years of Football Manager, I would have just sat there and pushed through it. But it makes kind of the overall collapse that more dramatic when it's like, man, I'm j I just can't do the videos. So, you know, I've, t I've kind of, you know, not been pressuring myself necessarily to force myself to do videos every day where the quality wouldn't be as good. But equally, um, you know, I want to keep the content ticking away. And I'm still enjoying this series when I sit down and play. It's just been a case of I have been planning ahead for my next series, which will be starting actually probably within the next week. Uh, I've tweeted about it a lot on Twitter um, but it is going to be that save in Canada, um, potentially later this week or later today even, as this video will be going up on the Sunday that I'm recording it. But potentially later today, if not sometime next week, I will have a video or two kind of introducing that save game. But um, yeah, I am kind of excited to get into it. I've been doing a lot of work on the database uh, for that with um, kind of the creator of the original Canadian database, Edward. I've been helping him a lot just with things uh, in terms of testing, fleshing it all out, doing face packs. It's in a really, really good spot, and I'm excited for it. And I know some people are going to go, Canada, I'm not interested in a Canada save. Give it a chance. That's all I'll say. Um, obviously, Canada has a World Cup coming up in seven years' time, so it's all going to be building towards that. Um, the league itself within the ca Canadian footballing system, the Canadian Premier League, is a brand new league, so there's no history to it. It's all kind of new and exciting, and it has a big focus on youth development. The seasons are quite short as well, so we should get through the years fairly quickly. Anyway, I feel like I'm talking you guys into a hard sell here. The, the reality is, it's fun, and uh, it will be fun, I promise you that. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to find out more information about it in the near future. But that has been taking up some of my time as well, just planning all of that stuff out. Anyway, first game here, the French Cup. Now, we are going to play the winner of this game. Lorient, if you could pull up the upset of a century, which they haven't because PSG scored in last minute. But if they had done, that would have been a massive favour for us. Because you can now see our next few games... We've got Auxerre today, Monaco today, PSG today. We may also get the game against Havre done today. We'll have to see how things plan out in terms of timings. But yeah, we are really getting towards the tail end of the season now. And when it comes to the league games, the big priority right now has to be to try and leapfrog Monaco. And of course, with us playing them in just a couple of days' time, that is certainly going to be 
well, what, what what we're aiming towards, what we need to do in terms of let's knock out PSG, uh, not knock out PSG, knock out and uh, well beat Monaco in the league and well take our destiny into our own hands. I guess technically our destiny is still in its own hands because if we beat Monaco, that would be good enough. But you know what I mean, I think. It's going to be crucial that we do see out these games. Um, Traore still trying to force a move. I feel like this summer transfer window could be a very, very interesting one in terms of the dealings that we end up doing. Gabels is doing well in training, which is good to see, of course. He's been out with a fairly long-term injury just a couple of months ago. Um, Moreno's not performing in training, but he's unhappy with me, so I can't actually talk to him about it and tell him to sort it out because of, well, how moody he is with me. DJ's also done well in uh, training, which is good news. Maybe I'm giving up on this guy a little bit too soon. I'm going to praise his training. I think he's the kind of player who I, I do value, I do rate, but perhaps he would be best suited to being loaned out next year. I feel like we've loaned out a lot of players this year. Um, there's certainly a few of those that I think it might be worth just cashing in on if we can. Anyway, the first game of today's episode is against Auxerre. Um, we have been rotating the team a little bit, but with the international break having come and gone, um, player fitness is in an okay spot. So besides Ella Militao, who is struggling just a little bit, and we'll bring in Lucas Romero there, we can pretty much play our full strength 11. Now, um, it is perhaps worth keeping an eye ahead to the game against Monaco, which is in half a week's time. But at the same time, this year when I have played our kind of um, reserve 11, they've not always performed to the best of our ability. So we can play three games in a week. We do have a squad of players fit enough to do that. And, well, that is what we are going to expect from them today as we go into this first game against Auxerre, a team who last year were absolutely superb. Obviously, they had a few players in our team uh, playing for them who were crucial. Players like Graven Birch, for example, and Markovic. Obviously, without them this year, they have struggled a lot more. They're down in 14th in the league. I'm not sure how far away from the relegation zone they are. I feel like they must be a little bit safer than I'm imagining they are. I feel I feel like they, they're they probably fine. Should we have a look? I'm curious now. We're on the attack here, but it doesn't matter. Um, they are... Da -da -da -da. Um... They're on 30 points. Can are behind by 6 points. And as I've looked at all of that, Fakira scored. Well, no, he hasn't. It's an own goal by Yang Mbuya, our former man. I mean, that's typical. I was like, we've got a highlight style, but it's probably going to be missed. Nope, it's been scored. Let's have a look at how it actually went in. Gabel's out wide to Memphis Depay. He puts the ball in. And, I mean, that looks to me like Fakir has got the final touch, but apparently it was an own goal. I'm not going to complain. At the end of the day, it's the goal that matters. And it gets us ahead in this game early on. And we'll hope now that that can just settle us into this game, that we can enjoy our football. Of course, we are going to play our possession oriented system in this kind of game, just because, well, it, it's a game away from home against a team who are probably going to want to try and hit us on the counter. I want us to be a little bit more controlling, I guess, in our aggression and holding on to the ball. We've been caught out on the counter far too many times this year away from home. And, well, we're going to hope to make amends today by changing up, well, not changing up the system, but electing to go with this system instead of the direct counter-attack. Very, very good start to this game for us, though. Half an hour gone. If we could get a second goal, it would help settle my nerves just a little bit. A one-goal lead is always dangerous. Nice build-up play here. Mendy on this left-hand side. Dinks it in. Falls to Coman. Blocked away. Man, that was a really, really good opportunity. Lovely build-up play. The ball in by Mendy was just... It wasn't, you know, whipped in, it wasn't a hit in hard, it was just a dangling carrot of a ball for a striker to try and get on the end of, and, well, ultimately the defensive block is the difference maker. And, uh, well, speaking of difference makers, Yang and Buya, our former player's own goal, is what gives us the lead at the moment in this game. PSG drawing 0-0 with Brest. Oh, FM, don't do this to me. Don't give me hope. Don't give me hope that PSG could still bottle this with nine games left of the season. We are so far behind them. We need them to bottle it numerous times between now and the end of the year. It feels extremely unlikely. Miracles can happen, though. Last year, PSG really did struggle. They went for a really, really rough spot where they dropped a lot of points. Last year, it was at the start of the year. Maybe this year it can happen at the, the end of the season. That's what we're going to be hoping for. We can worry about PSG all we want. We've got to do the talking on the pitch in our own games, first and foremost, and while we might be able to do some of that talking there, what a lovely goal and finish that was by Gabels. That looked like a real goal. I know that might be a weird thing to say. I feel like you know what I'm talking about when I say it looked like a real goal in the football manager terms. 
Nice little build-up play. Kingsley Coman cuts inside, running at the back line. They drop off, they drop off. Lovely ball through to Gabels, who tucks it into that bottom corner superbly. Really nice finish there. And if we can now get a third to start the second half, maybe I'd look at maybe taking off players like Vakir, saving their legs, because next game against Monaco could potentially be a big one. Two starters putting a very, very naughty tackle there. And, well, they're on the break here. Fomba hits it. Anthony Lopez, a lovely stop by him in goal for us. And now we're gone. Really, really can't knock the performance so far. I'm going to tell the players I, I want to demand more from them. An hour left here. Header narrowly over the crossbar. Unfortunately, PSG have taken the lead. Lo Celso, who's got the, the winning goal in their cup game, coming up big in the league now. A player who we did have the chance to sign, you might remember, in January, and we elected not to do it. We do have too many attacking midfielders. They've got a goal here. I think we're going to VAR for a potential offside. That was a weird goal. It's been it's been ruled out. It has been ruled out. It was just weird because Lopez didn't really react. You can see there the, the line. I don't know why it paused when he touched the ball to show us the line of where he was offside when the ball was hit. I mean, answers on a postcard, but the bottom line is it was offside. 20 minutes left here. I could probably make some changes. We'll wait and see this last highlight play out because if they were to score and cut the deficit to one, I'd be less inclined to take off the likes of Fakir, which was the change I was thinking about doing. Um, just protecting some of our big key players going in to this end of season. As my phone goes off, let's, let's turn off the phone, Jack. That is my phone alarm to wake me up for Sunday morning if I overslept. Am I the only person who sets an alarm on the weekend? Minor tangent here is, Gabel, what is this? How's Gabel's got that? He should have scored it. But yeah, am I the only person who sets an alarm at the weekend? I feel like it, it, without an alarm, any morning I'll just oversleep. I'll just sleep through it and I won't do anything with my day. Today, apparently I woke up way before my alarm and forgot that I set it. But there you go. Behind the curtain, the life of Jack. We're all wiser now for it, I feel like. Fakir, cutting inside. Have a go, my son. Good stop by the keeper, but I think off the back of that we're going to make some changes. I'm going to bring Moise Keynes in for Depay. Uh, I'm going to take off Fakir for our... And you know what? We'll go with a triple change in the final third. We'll bring in Bertrand Traore as well. Depay, of course, coming back from a longer-term injury, which happened, well, just before the... I do, sorry, I just noticed something. Can, people are going to be like, why have you just noticed this now? Look, look at the... Um, look at the linesman. I've never seen him do this animation or never noticed it. I'm hoping it's going to show it in a second. But he, he did the animation where they hold up the flag for a sub... Is it weird that I've never noticed that in FM before? I, I hope you saw it then. If you don't, you like you basically hold up the flag by either end in like a ver in a horizontal position. I did not know that, that was animated in FM. That's probably been there forever, and now I sound like an idiot. It's the little things. You learn something new every day. But um, well, with that minor distraction out of the way, let's focus on the game. We're two 0 up. Time is trickling away. That is absolutely fine. Perfect start to today's episode. I mean, it could have been more perfect, I guess, if PSG had slipped up themselves, but we'll take it. 2 0 on the night. Uh, player of the match, interestingly, went to Mendy at left back. He was pretty good for us. He got an assist, obviously, a clean sheet as well to help. All in all, though, just a very, very good performance by our team. And uh, you can see now we trail PSG by five points. They do have a game in hand. Monaco didn't play today, so we stay above them. Or, or rather go above them, but yeah, we know that they've got that game in hand that we are going to have to be aware of. You can see all our loanies playing lots of football. It's all blooming fantastic. Uh, Shevas is just looking really, really good. Look how much he's continuing to improve. How can you not be excited about this kid? He looks top-notch. Like, he might be... Well, he probably has forced Olmo out of my first team plans next year, which might be really harsh on Olmo, but that is the reality of football. He's looked superb for us. Anyway, we've now got Monaco next. Not going to be an easy game for us. They have been very, very stiff opposition uh, throughout this year, to be honest. They've been a bit of a fawn in our side, it would be fair to say. We are going to hope to yank that fawn out and uh, we'll stomp all over it. I don't know why you'd stomp on a fawn, because then you just get a fawn in your foot. Unless you're wearing shoes, I guess. We're wearing shoes and stamping on a fawn. You can see here they took on Lille in their last game. Was that a Sunday kickoff? It was not. That was a while ago. I guess the way that fixtures have worked out, they've just had a bit of a break. Let's have a look. 
Have they played since the international break? They haven't, so they're going to go into this game very, very fresh. Which is, well, worth noting, I think. It's, it's going to make things tricky for us. Monaco in two days' time. You can see player conditioning, to be honest, isn't too bad here. But just for the sake of safety, I'm just going to give all of the players who are a little bit tired after that last game just a one-day rest. Just to hopefully collect themselves, get re-energised. They put in a good performance last time out. You can see we've got the game here against Monaco, and then we've got the Coupe de la Ligue final against PSG, where we are going to be looking for some vengeance, I feel like. Over the, this episode and next episode, we play PSG twice in cup games. Um, we're going to hope that we can well, show, show that maybe we've been a bit unfortunate this year, I guess. I don't want to say unfortunate, because we've been abysmal away from home, to be frank. But... I don't know, it would be really disappointing to lose to PSG in both of these next upcoming games. Granted, you know, they have spent £200 million. It's a little bit mad how much more money they've spent than us. But, um, no, we'll be okay. I'm going to just quickly sort out contracts for all of our staff members. All of them try to cheekily get wage rises in. I mean, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to kneel to their demands because I'm just not an argumentative kind of guy. I'm very happy with our backroom staff set up here. Um, at uh, Leon, there's no real reason to change it, so that's all fine. Players with contracts expiring, none here who I feel like we need to offer contracts to. Players like uh, Uelembo here, good player, not a great player though. He's never going to be good enough for our team, age 21, with how he is right now. You can see Saint Etienne playing PSG, so I guess PSG suffering from fixture congestion too. So maybe maybe that can help us going into the final next time. Um, I am going to bring in Militao back in at right back for Moreno. In terms of the rest of the team, I think we're going to stick with this squad. I feel like this is what I consider my strongest 11 to be. It's a pretty good team all in all. Um, we'll hope that they can do the business and the talking on the pitch. Gabels, he's found a little bit of form lately against his former club today. We need him to find a lot of form here. A chance to win this game, go ahead of Monaco. And uh, create just a little bit of breathing room with them, granted, having a game in hand. If we lose this, they would go ahead of us with a game in hand. And at that point, you would probably be waving goodbye to second place with eight games remaining of the league season. That is definitely in the forefront of my mind as something that we have to be wary of. We'll see how we get on, though, today. Militao getting a booking this early on is concerning. Unfortunately for us, PSG scoring after three minutes. St Etienne looking like they're not going to do us a favour. Interestingly, Neymar the man with the goal. So, ahead of that cup final, it does not appear... I will repeat, it does not appear like PSG are rotating their team, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, I'm going to go with the control style of play system here. You might notice I didn't change it. That was intentional. Just because I feel like we've tried the direct style of play against some of the bigger teams and it's not really served us that well. And although we're away from home, I want us to grab this game by the scruff of the neck. And, uh, well, two start very nearly scoring there. But, yeah, grab the game by the scruff of the neck. Get a stranglehold on possession, hopefully, and cause teams issues in their own back garden. You know, not many teams will go out there and play a possession oriented system away from home. I want us... To do that against Leon and scare Monaco. I say that we're not really having enough of the ball right now after 20 minutes to justify this system. But a lot of the chances have come our way. So we'll stick with it at least for now. We'll see how it plays out over the next 10 minutes or so as we are on the attack here. Memphis bringing the ball forward to end on Bele now. Gabel's looking to make the run. The ball wide to Coman is a disappointing one by end on Bele. Monaco going long. Lengler reads the play well, gets it out to Fakir. Really nice build-up play here by us. That pass a little wayward, and now Monaco may be looking to hit us on the break. Edda Militao reads it, though, and we go again here. The ball dinks over the fullback to Memphis. Can he get it into the back post? He can! Komen, the goal at his mercy, and he's headed it disappointingly into the side netting. That was a really, really good opportunity for him there. To break the deadlock in this game. And ultimately he has squandered that chance. At the back post. I would have expected him to score that. But we're not going to panic. We're not going to fret. Possession is slowly creeping back into our favour. As we're going for another period here of sustained possession. And the ball threaded through to Gabels. Who launches that effort over the bar. Just caught it almost too well. Did the young Frenchman up top. Just launched it over the crossbar. I mean half an hour gone here. Things... Looking pretty good, to be honest. We've had six shots to their three, not hitting the target nearly enough. Possession's been fairly close, but all the highlights have been of our own chances. 
We'll hope that at some point here we're going to break the deadlock. And while Edda Militao down the right hand side, maybe he can do just that. Crosses it in. Sadibi gets it back to Mendy. He attempts to get it in. It's blocked. Two slots end on Bele to Fakir to Memphis. Fredra and Dombele who continued on his run. And a lovely goal there with a really nice piece of passing move. And Dombele making the run from deep. You know, he passes the ball out to Fakir and then he just keeps that run going. No one picks him up in the Monaco midfield. And well, with four minutes until half time, we break the deadlock here. A really, really nice goal. And a cool composed finish from the centre midfielder. That is one that you'd expect your strikers to to bury in a manner like that. But the centre midfield comes good for us. And now, well, Fakir with a chance from the ranged free kick. Narrowly over the crossbar in the end. We could have had the quick 1-2 blow there. Very late on in this half. A corner to Monaco, though. This would be a real sucker punch if they made something of it. Ronnie Lopez crosses the ball in. Pellegris there. Heads it to Christian Pavon and... I want to say against the runner play, against the highlights that we've seen Monaco score. I don't want to say it's necessarily against the runner play because when you look at the stats, it has been pretty close. We've come the closest to scoring on a number of occasions, but unfortunately for us, that does not matter right now. Is that Mendy at the back post? He's just sleeping on it. It is. Didn't pick up his man well enough. Christian Pavon, the Argentine international, showing up and, well, showing up big time. Gets Monaco back into this game. Two goals to end the first half, see the game swing one way and then the other. And well, at half time, I have to tell the players I'm far from pleased. Edda Militao on a booking scares me slightly. This is a game where we need to keep all the players on the pitch. So I'm going to take him off and I'm going to bring in Lucas Romero, who his media description is world class midfielder. That seems very, very generous to me. But, uh, well, I'm not going to complain. Memphis, free kick here for him, hits it again narrowly over the bar. We've had a few of these free kicks. Need to start hitting the target with them, really. Monaco with possession in their own half here. We're going to try and press them and push them into their own half, perhaps here. Jorge with the ball. Plays it forward to Pellegrini, who knocked it on to Mr. Nobody. Wallace, looking very tired there as he chases back for the ball. I don't know how I feel about us passing it around at the back here. It always feels like it's a recipe for disaster. And, well, we're forced to go long. And Monaco, the team now, with the ball. Feels like they might be edging out a little bit of the midfield battle here. Lucas Romero picks it back to Lopez. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh, that pressure. That pressure that we commented on just a second ago. That was forced us to go long. It's seen our keeper kick it straight into Pellegrini's head. And unfortunately for us, it's a goal under unfortunate circumstances. But it's a goal that sees Monaco take the lead here. Lopez hits it first time straight into the attacker. And it rolls into the back of the net. And that could be the difference between second and third this season. Gabels has been poor. I'm going to take him off. So has Fakir. Mind you, so has Komen. I'm going to keep Fakir on because I feel like he can change the game. Uh, but Komen has been poor. We're going to bring on Traore for him. Change is happening pretty early on in this game by my own standards. But I feel like we need to change something. You know what? I think we'll also go to the direct attacking style of play. We're going to adapt. I'm going to try and maybe press a little bit harder. Up the pitch and Keane on off the bench, header narrowly over the crossbar for him. We've had a lot of shots in this game, but we are struggling to hit the target. We've also created all the clear cut half chances. Maybe just going more attacking here can see us get a little bit more in the way of um, you know, clear cut opportunities. We are going to leave ourselves more exposed at the back, but a goal down with limited time left. We need to press onwards and try and seize the initiative. Ball falls here to Memphis. Oh my god, Depay. That is what we needed, my friend. A bolt from the blue here from the Dutchman out on the left. A striker that any number 11 in world football would be proud of. Moise Keane to Traore, who brings it forward, looks to have a go of his own, and it gets blocked, but it falls to Memphis. One touch, two touches, just squeezes it delightfully into that back post. Lovely, lovely finish there. 15 minutes left. Do I want to stay on attacking? You know what? I think I do a draw. It's okay for us, but it would still mean that we don't have our own destiny in our own hands. We, ha we have more to gain by staying on attack and going for it again here than sitting back and inviting pressure on a draw. It's okay for us, but it doesn't really change things in terms of Monaco's game in hand would prove crucial. As Keane has a great opportunity in two starts header wide of the mark. That was a really great opportunity there for Moise Keane, which unfortunately he has wasted. I can do one more talk. I'm going to ask the players to push forward. I want us to try and get this third goal in the game. 
Ball lumped clear as far as Langler. They are committing their own for players forward. And while Mendy, lovely ball to Moise Keane. He could be clean through. On his left pack, he just hits it straight at the keeper again. Would Gabels have scored either of those opportunities? Would he have been able to get on them with his tiring legs? Questions that we may never know the answer to, but... What I do know is Moise Keane could have and probably should have won us this league game. It's going to finish, I think, 2-2 here, barring a late sucker punch. I mean, I wouldn't mind a sucker punch if it's in our favour, but with the ball in our own half this deep, just get it clear. I'll take the draw at this point. It's not the best result. It could have been a lot worse. Depay's late goal sees us get a share of the spoils. Unfortunately, PSG do win that game there. You can see what I mean about how drawing this game doesn't really change a great deal. Monaco with a game in hand, one point behind us. So even if we were to win all of our remaining games, it would not be enough if Monaco were to do the exact same. And well, with eight games left of the season for them, it's not impossible. Depay back from injury, coming up big for us this episode so far. Um, we'll hope that he can keep it going. He's apparently listed as not needed. I... I I respectfully disagree. I think you're a first-team player again. Of course, we did offer him out uh, a little while ago just to see if we could get any interest in him. With a performance like that, I feel like he's worthy of still being in the first team. And, uh, well, we now have PSG in a cup final today. So, the games, they don't really get easier, do they, for us? There's a few players here who are tired from um, playing in the reserve team, but we'll also rest them. We don't discriminate here. Everyone who's struggling deserves a little bit of a rest. Two days to go away and recover. I don't feel like that was the worst performance in the world away from home against Monaco. Given how our away form has been this year, a draw and a win against Auxerre and Monaco really isn't the worst result. You look, we lost against PSG, Juventus, Bordeaux, Gungam, Strasbourg... Um, draws against Nice, Fenerbahce away we lost, Lille we lost, Tottenham we lost, Toulouse we lost. Man, we've lost a lot away from home. We've not actually lost at home this year, which is pretty impressive and pretty good going. We'll hope to see out the season with that, but you can see we play at home in the Coupe de la Ligue final. I'm surprised that game isn't played at a neutral venue, but I'm not going to ask questions. And well, we've got four home games in our next four games to get through April. We'll hope that we can get four wins. And well, with two games against PSG, that might seem more unlikely than likely. But we will give it our best effort. And I feel like for this game, I might just try and play the controlling style of play. We might just really go for it against them. Gabels has done great in training. Moise Keane's development has also been pleasing, apparently. I mean, look at that. That is what you want to see. Also broke into the Italian national team. I guess that happened at the start of the episode when I was mashing continue. I did notice that uh, Markovic um, got off the mark for Serbia with his first ever international goal. I did not see Moise Keane making his international debut. But that is really, really good going for him. It's a shame that he couldn't take the opportunities that we've had so far today when they've fallen to him. But maybe, if we need him to, he can come up big in this game against PSG. It's a huge game in the Coupe de la Ligue. BKT final. That is a mouthy name, isn't it? We'll call it the Coupe de la Ligue. It's easier. But yes, a big game for us. If we just look actually at the uh, the board expectations for this competition, just as a refresher, the Coupe de la Ligue, uh, they don't care. They, they, they don't care. I care. I want silverware, so we're going to play to win it. But yeah, be aware of that. Shanas out for four to five weeks. That is a teeny tiny bit of a concern. That may might be the majority of the rest of the season over for him. Uh, Kakaret played. Uh, Ferreira played and actually picked up a goal, which is great to see against Auxerre. He has continued to perform well on his loan at Brest, so we may well loan him to them again if they want to renew that. Terrier plays 90 minutes. Marin plays 90 minutes. How has Marin's development been? teeny tiny bit disappointing I mean he is still only 20 so let's not get too concerned too soon but I had high hopes for him Durand keeps a clean sheet for uh, Lorient which is fantastic news Awusu um, well he got a clean sheet and a 7.1 rating Awusu's been deceptive I hope that we can cash in on him in the summer to be honest he's never going to be good enough for our first team but um, he could prove use useful for us as a source of income Makes it sound like I'm talking about cattle, doesn't it, when I talk about it like that. Anyway, here is the team that played last game. Is that the team that I want to play against PSG again? I think it is. I am just wondering and thinking about possibly changing things up. 
and playing the five-man midfield formation and seeing how it serves us. And you know what? I think that probably is the right move today. We're not going to do a change of personnel, but it's going to be a change of system. I want to really try and cause um, PSG as many issues in the midfield as possible. They've got Pogba, Rabio, and Rodri. They are very, very versatile centre mids. They can all attack and be pretty good creative players, and especially defensively, they're good. And we're going to be looking at these three guys to be big for us. Neymar on the bench for them, but they've got Luan, Mbappe, and uh, Cavani up top. Thiago Silva, Marquinhos at centre-back. Very good. Kevin Trapp in goal. I mean, it's just a very good team, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's a team that, when you were to match our teams up against one another on paper, you'd say that they have the advantage. But we are at home for this game, and I hope there's going to be a fire in our players' bellies. A fire of burning desire for revenge. That is what we need from our players today and that is what I expect from us today now we have to try and do the talking for that on the pitch and uh, we'll see how we get on with this challenge that we are going to be undertaking trying to really nullify the creativity coming from deep and while we have a set piece hit for Keir just wide of the post the first opportunity of the game we've seen in fact the first effort of the game on goal it took 10 minutes a bit of a battle of the midfield perhaps emerging here which is okay for us. I mean, they have superior quality. We want to break down the play in the midfield. We want to make things difficult for them. In the opening half an hour, not a great deal in the way of chances, although there could be something emerging here. Coleman, can he get on the end of it? Is that a penalty? We're going to VAR. Is it about to give a penalty? It is. A chance from the spot for Keir. Can he get our noses ahead in this cup final? Can he do us a massive favour? The captain, he steps up. He's missed it. Oh, it's disastrous. Oh, Look, this year just hasn't gone our way, I feel like. I feel like we've been very, very unfortunate in games. And maybe we're going to look back on that as another moment. Although, is this about to be given offside? Depay scores. I'm concerned it's about to be ruled. It's actually been ruled out. Are you kidding me? We've missed a penalty. Oh, it, was off it was offside. Denied from the penalty spot. Denied by VAR. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that... It, 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 a roller coaster of emotions over the course of about a minute here. I could tell by the way the camera angle didn't change that VAR was about to interfere and give offside. Oh, we've got another chance here though. Cabells, what a ball that is by Fakir. Cabells, can he his goal? He hits the woodwork rebound. We can't, how are we not scoring? We've been the better team by a country mile. We've had a goal disallowed. We've hit the woodwork. We've had a penalty missed. I mean, PSG have done nothing. The tactical system has worked wonders. But we've just not broken the deadlock. And if I sound exasperated, it's because I absolutely am. What is happening? I mean, we have a system here that seems to have worked wonders against PSG. They've actually changed their system. Interesting. They've gone to a... Wow. Mm. You know what? With the lack of presence in wider areas here... I'm actually going to set our wing-backs to be on attack. Which might seem a little bit mad, but I think it's the right move. I am also tempted to drop Toussaint deeper. Just to try and help us a little bit. With the fact that they're now playing with two centre-attacking midfielders. Because I want the wingers to get higher up and you know push higher up because they're going to be free. But with two kind of deeper centre-attacking mids, I feel like a defensive midfielder, Toussaint, could be the way to go. Bit of a battle of the tactics emerging here, perhaps. We've got a set piece for Keir. Crosses it in back post. Gabels is there. Can't quite get it through. A goal kick now going to be um, going in their favour. Uh, Neymar is on for Mbappe. I should probably check. I want, I, I want to know what are the rules for this competition when it comes to extra time and penalties. I should have checked this before going into the game. Let's just have a look. So rules. Da, 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 da. Um, extra time played if the teams are level. Penalties. Okay. I wanted to make sure that it was definitely going to go to extra time. Depay's picked up an injury. We're going to take him off and play things safe. I'm going to make an unusual change. Moise Keane is going to be the man to come on. I'm not going to go with St. Maximin. We are going to go with... Um, well, um, the youngster, the young striker who made his debut for Italy out on the left. He's proved crucial in that position out wide previously. Assisted in the Champions League final from there. And now, well, there he is with the header. Rodrigo gets it off the line, though. Oh, my gosh. That was actually going in. 
it was actually going in. I mean, we've been miles on top in this game. It's got to be said. We've looked so good. Ball back post. Keane's there. Nods it back to Komen who scores. Finally. Ten minutes left on the clock. We absolutely deserve that goal. Can't even make an argument against it. We've been the better team. And Moise Keane on off the bench to make a difference. Edda Militao's ball here, by the way, on his left foot. Superb. Moise Keane could have headed it, but from that narrow angle might have struggled to find an opening past Kevin Trapp. Instead, nods it back across and Coman with the goal at his mercy, bangs it in. And on Bele on a booking is a teeny tiny bit of a concern. With three minutes left, I almost want to take him off because if they were to score or we were to have a sending off, these last ten minutes could prove worrying. The 87th minute, that's not not like last game, please. No, None of the ball being kicked into the attacker's head. Moise Keane, he's on the ball again. He's looking high on confidence. Fred Shrew Bells, what a ball that is by Moise Keane. Oh my God, that was top draw. Going to bring in Lucas Romero with a change of legs. Two goals up now. Surely that is this final. Signed, sealed and delivered. Moise Keane on off the bench with two assists. But the pass here... Oh my god, the run is great as well in behind the centre-back. Gabel's tidy little finish in at the near post. Two goals up. We are going to win some silverware this year. And maybe this can give our players some confidence now going into the French Cup against PSG. That we are actually going to be able to beat them on numerous occasions this year in big cup games. In the league they've caused us issues. But well, we're, we're pressing the high here ourselves. I thought we were going to get a repeat of what Monaco did to us. Unfortunately, Trap does it get it clear. I mean, maybe this is the system to play against PSG. They have not coped with it at all well. It has really stifled out the creativity in their team. They changed their system. We adapted accordingly. You'd have to say that really, really worked, that change. And well, we have another chance here. Gabels make it free. Embarrass them. Humiliate them, unfortunately, Trap. I mean, he keeps PSG in it, theoretically. But with two and a half minutes left, you can't help but feel like he's only prevented this getting embarrassing for them. As Gabels free header... At the back post. We've had four clear-cut chances and one half chance. Ten seconds left. That is going to be all she wrote for this game. We have been by far and away the better team in this game. We have looked rampant throughout. It probably should have been more than 2-0. PSG royally humbled. And uh, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna save this. We might not see this again this year. It does mean that for the last two years, in fact, did we get silverware in our first year? Is it bad that I can't remember? Did we win a cup, a cup last in our first year? Obviously, last year we did superbly. I, I genuinely can't remember what we did. Um, oh, of course, we won this competition first season. We did. Yeah, we won the Coupe de la Ligue first season. We then didn't win it last year, but we did obviously win the league and the Champions League last year. And this year, we've won the Club World Championship. We've won the Coupe de la Ligue. We've kept the silverware flowing, let's be honest. Depay's out for one to three days. A tiny bit of a concern, but we'll be okay with that. We qualify for the Europa League, which is great, I guess, that we're guaranteed European football. The way things are going, we should be guaranteeing ourselves Champions League football sooner rather than later. Probably by next episode, you'd expect that to be the case. We now go, now go into the game against Havre, hoping that it's going to be okay for us. Man, we missed a penalty and had a goal disallowed due to offside in that game as well. That really could have been more than 2-0. The more I think about it. I think for this next game against Havre, we're going to rotate the team with one eye on the PSG episode, which will open up next episode. Um, Kone's picked up an injury only out for one to two days. That's okay. I mean, look how much Kone's improving. Just training with the first team, being involved in the first team, being in one of those units where he is gaining a little bit in the way of... Um, what would you call it? In, in the way of... Uh, Experience and, you know, you know, tutoring. Not tutoring. What's it called now? Mentoring. Mentoring. Still don't know how I feel about the mentoring system in Football Manager now. But look, when you have the players for it, it's superb. But sometimes you just don't have the squad that's ready for it. And obviously the fact you now can't mentor youth players without promoting them to the first team. It always feels a little bit loopholey to me. The fact that I have to have players like OJ and Kone in the uh, the first team. Just to have them in a training block and a mentoring block and then just have them available for the under-21s. But obviously it's the way that the FM game has been designed, I guess. So it's just how we have to do things here. I'm a little bit disappointed about De Jong's injury. He was someone who I was really, really excited about. But that injury has been a bit of a killer for him. 
and his season. Gabels wants a new contract for Kier. Can you have a word with him? Unable to resolve it. Gabels has, what, two years left on his current deal and an optional three-year extension. We'll just trigger that extension. We'll, ju we'll just trigger that. So he's now got five years left. He's thinking about an improved contract. Well, mate, the good news is for you, you're now here for the next four and a half seasons or four seasons. So um, you can be thinking about leaving, but it's it's not going to happen. Your contract now expires at the end of 2026. So um, happy Christmas. You're not going anywhere. And we don't have to worry about giving him a wage rise for a little while. Which is also a nice little bonus. It's why I do tend to include on young prospects who I anticipate breaking through into the first team... Uh, that exact clause. It really does work wonders for us. Anyway, final game of today's episode. We're going to be taking on Havre. Havre. I'm not... Please let me know how to pronounce this team's name because it's a team that I always feel like I end up just butchering. I feel like Havre, Havre is how it's meant to be said. I know there's some of you French viewers out there. Please do fill me in. In terms of team for today's game, um, we're going to play the controlling style of play, I think, and just play it safe. Lucas Romero is going to, of course, come in. We're going to play uh, St. Maximin out on the left. Trincao on the right, Olmo down the middle. This is our rotated 11, but I feel like we need to do that. Um, the fixture congestion has been pretty bad. And uh, Havre are a team that I expect us to beat, and we should be beating fairly comfortably. You can see they're playing with both their wider midfielders deeper. And so with that in mind, I am going to set our wing-backs to be on attack. And we're going to get them forward and we'll see how they get on for us. I'm also going to do a little bit of a team talk and uh, apparently annoy all of our players. I'll change my team talk for the outfield players that aren't the defenders. We have saved that situation there by encouraging them. And, uh, well, let's see how we now get on in this game. It's the fourth game of today's episode. I feel like given the games that we had going into today's video... We've come out relatively okay. Um, obviously, relative is always important to note, but I feel like in the grand scheme of things, today's episode playing Monaco and PSG could have gone a lot, lot worse for us. I mean, QS now to concede within 20 seconds. I mean, it's the commentator's curse. If ever, if ever it existed, I feel like this is un, um, unarguable proof that um, it, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> the commentator's curse. I was so confident. I was so happy. Furhat puts the ball round. Kadawere hits it, and I mean, now we have a mountain to climb with our reserve 11. I don't feel like there's any point in changing the system or panicking because that is just a case of our players just being caught napping by Havre here. And uh, well, a mountain to climb. Our players' body language is not good. I'm going to demand more from them. I want them refocused and re energized. You can see since conceding 69% of the ball, their only shot is that goal, at least only shot on target. I mean, we're absolutely dominant, but we have to show it on the scoreline somewhere. We now have a chance maybe from our Whips it in. Headed clear. Only Suarez Markovic who hits it and, well, gets a fortuitous rebound. We're not going to complain. Recently got his first goal for the Serbian national team. Now gets his third goal of the season from centre-back. And uh, I definitely see Svetsazar Markovic as our long-term centre-back solution. He's been very, very good when we've called upon him. Obviously, we have Wallace and Lengley. If one of them decided to kick up a fuss and think about moving, I feel confident we have a player who can step up and be countered. You can see here, St. Maximin having issues. He's had to go off with an injury. We're bringing Kingsley Coman out on the left. Coman is a weird player, right? Because he started his time here at the club so well, but as of late, he's just been a little bit disappointing. You can see in his last five games, an average rating of 6.82. That is underwhelming. We'll hope... That that's just a little blip. And well, a chance here to come on and maybe make an impact. We're now looking. Is this going to be a penalty or is it outside? I think this is outside the box. The referee's got a long run to VAR. He wants to look at him it himself. This could potentially be a penalty. I'd be surprised if this went to VAR. Because I don't think the ref actually gave the decision initially. We will wait with anticipation. It looked like a free kick. That's what I think is going to be given. But there's a chance it's a penalty. We'll, we'll want to believe in it. VAR... It happened outside the box. There you go. I mean, I could have told you that. We didn't need VAR. I would have happily conceded that to speed up the game. Three minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Obviously, some of that coming from the injury that was sustained for us. Well, it's Havre who are going to look to end this, this half maybe on the front foot here. They're bringing the ball forward through Guzzo. 
He spreads the play to Furhat, who got an assist for the first goal on this right wing. And it's a mirror image in Kadoware. It's their second shot on target. It's their second goal. Neither of them has actually been considered a clear-cut chance. It's just been a clinical masterclass. I feel like unhappy doesn't quite cut how I'm feeling right now. We are. I don't want to say we're being royally FM'd, but it kind of feels like we're being royally FM'd. Kadoware finds space twice, and he's punished us twice, to be fair to him. This is the only game happening today, so we'll need to try and book up our ideas, otherwise Monaco are going to be in with a fantastic chance of securing second. With things as they are right now, you can feel, you really can feel that kind of second place just slipping away from us. An hour left. I'm going to take off Olmo, who's been disappointing for Fakir, and I'm going to bring in Gabels up top as well. We are bringing on the, the cavalry. They're heavy hitters. Um, we're also going to go to the direct attacking style of play, regardless of what happens with this chance. Here is Komen. Oh, my God. I mean, I threw him under the bus as we subbed him on. I said he's not been good enough lately. How about that? Cometh the man, cometh the moment. What a goal that is. Moreno's throw in, Coburn, one touch, two touches, three touches, edge the 18-yard box, uncontested, in off the post, a satisfying finish. And I am going to stick with going on the direct attacking style of play. We need another goal in this game. We really do need to try and punish them now. With the time that remains, we, we desperately need a third. Desperately, I can't quite explain in words how much we need it. There is seven minutes left. I've switched to very attacking. We might be leaving ourselves exposed at the back. One point doesn't really change the complexion of the league kind of situation. Lala whips it in. Gabels is there. He scores! And now we can switch back to the Leon control possession system. Moreno, get on defensive, my friend. Lala, get on defensive, my friend. Awar, you can go to deep line playmaker on defend. Fakir, drop that little bit deeper. We have five minutes left to see out in this game. Tactical changes haven't taken effect yet. Lala, con con kind of, what's the word? A smart foul, a considered foul. He knew what he was doing, just breaking down the play. I mean, if we now win this, I am going to pat myself on the back for my subs. Although there's still one potential sucker punch here. Surely not. Feebas here. Is he going to evolve into a Milotic? I mean, with passes like that, he certainly is not. And that is going to be all she wrote here. 3-2 it finishes. Gabels on off the bench. Komen on off the bench. They have been the difference makers. And a, a superb fight back there that very much keeps our hopes alive. You can see we've played now more games than a lot of the teams around us. Which is fine. We've now laid the gauntlet for Monaco. We've said, you know what, Monaco... You've now got to go out there and win some of your remaining games. And given the fact they're still in the Europa League and they did beat Man United in their first leg. These games, whilst they should probably be simple games against the likes of Montpellier, Strasbourg, Saint-Etienne, Rennes, Cannes and Gungam. We're kind of laying a little bit of a marker. You know, we're saying this is what you've got to do. In terms of our remaining games, we've got Nice, we've got Dijon in 10th, Strasbourg in 16th, Angers who are bottom, Montpellier second from bottom and Rennes. You'd say that we have the easier run in. And, uh, well, that running is going to start next episode with the French Cup quarterfinal against PSG. And after how today's gone, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can win that game now and hopefully get our season back on track. Suddenly, what well, has been a pretty disappointing year wouldn't be the end of the world if we could secure, you know, the French Cup for, I guess, what would be considered theoretically a treble. But anyway, I feel like the title has escaped us now. We now need to just focus on securing second place and marching on in the French Cup. Hopefully I will see you guys next episode where we will endeavour to do just that. If you have enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to drop a like on it. I'll see you guys again next time. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>